Hi, so I made a video on EKGs because I know that it's a hard subject for everyone. Um, so we're just going to start out with a normal EKG. Um, so this is what a normal EKG looks like. You have your P wave right there. And then you have your Q, your R, and your S, which go together. That's called your QRS complex. And your QRS complex is basically the um, ventricles contracting. And then we have our T wave, which is the relaxation. Um, so that's basically what you need to know uh, in order to understand the um, heart rhythms. And um, yeah, let's get started. Um, it should be a quick video. Thanks so much for watching. Okay, so the first one here is um, VTAC. Um, and I call this McDonald's VTAC because it kind of looks like the McDonald's N. Don't you think? Um, so basically, you first need to assess if there's a pulse or no pulse, um, because that is really important in your um, treatment decision. Um, so we're just going to talk about the pulse list, because that is um, the most obviously life-threatening. Um, so this one you can shock, um, and you have to make sure that you have them on the monitor, and it is shockable. Um, if it is truly VTAC, then you can shock it, and it's pulseless. Um, and you give one milligram of epinephrine every three to five minutes, um, and then amiodarone if needed. Um, they also say lidocaine, but amiodarone is preferred over lidocaine. Um, so this is what VTAC looks like, um, the McDonald's VTAC. I know you'll never be able to think of McDonald's the same way, will you? Um, this is Torstad's, um, so I call it the cutie at the party it made me pass out because it's usually um, a long QT uh, interview, I mean interval, excuse me. Um, so the biggest thing here is to cardiovert or defibrillate depending on if it's pulse, if it has a, they have a pulse or not. Um, and then so the QT at the party, it kind of looks like a party streamer as you see here. Um, I like that. That's that's a cool way of me for me to remember it. So it kind of is like, um, so this is also called VTAC, but it's polymorphic VTAC, whereas the one beforehand was um, monomorphic. Um, so monomorphic is McDonald's, um, Torsad's polymorphic is the cutie at the party, um, and. Basically, it's usually associated, as I said, with a long QT interval. So we don't want to give amiodarone, um, and we want to stop all elongating drugs um, of the QT, such as, um, I don't know if you've heard of Zofran, which is um, on Dastrone. It's an anti-nausea medication that definitely, speed, that definitely um, decreases the QT, or increases, excuse me, the QT interval. Um, so it's normally caused by low magnesium. So we're going to give magnesium two milligrams IV. Um, and the, basically our goal here is to speed up the heart to decrease the QT interval. Um, so that's towards odds. So what we've been over so far is we've been over the normal sinus rhythm, which we have our P, QRS, and then T, right? And then we went over McDonald's. M, that's monomorphic, and then this one, I don't know if I could draw it, is polymorphic, right? Um, so that's the three we've been under, went over so far. So supraventricular tachycardia is a, um, also known as atrial tachycardia. Um, the P waves, as you can see, are playing hide and seek. I don't see any P waves, do you? Or if you do see them, they're a little bit funny, right? Um, so the first thing we do this with this is vagal stimulation. Um, so vagal stimulation is basically when you, like a lot of times people will say, you know, bear down like you're having a bowel movement. That would be vagal stimulation. Um, that's something called bowel salvas maneuver. Um, other things you can do for vagal stimulation is carotid massage. However, this is extremely painful and it doesn't, it's not like your massage at the spa um basically they 
massage your carotid to decrease that um, heart rate. Um, because remember, the carotid is um, is a big a big reason that you have your heart rate. Um, and then if none of these work, um, then they move to adenosine, which is a, a pretty pretty scary drug. Um, it lets the beat drop though, for sure. Um, you give it really fast. You push it as close to the heart as you can. Um, and don't be afraid if you see asystole, which is no heart rhythm for a minute. Um, because basically what this drug does is it stops the heart and it restarts it again. Um, so it's a pretty, pretty, really, really, really cool drug. Um, and we use this if, um, none of the other vagal stimulation, carotid massage, whatever that works. Um, sometimes we like put people's face in ice. Um, I've never seen that done, but I know it's in the book. Um, again, I've never seen it done. I don't know if it's a real thing, but it's in the book. Um, so yeah, that's supraventricular tachycardia. Um, so it's like a narrow, um, QRS. right? Whereas the other ones were wide QRSs. Okay. Um, okay. So I put it on the same like slide-ish sort of because they're both similar. Um, at least the treatment is similar. So, um, this top one up here is, um, atrial flutter. Um, and you can see I put sawtooth flutter, um, because it kind of looks like a sawtooth. Um, so, this is atrial flutter, um, and then this is atrial fibrillation, uh, where you can't find the P waves. So, um, I don't see any P waves, do you? No? Okay. Um, so basically, this is atrial fibrillation, um, and for both of them, it's like a very similar treatment. Um, we need to give anticoagulants, and um, we need to uh, synchronize cardio over it, um, but if it's been it's been longer than 48 hours. You have to like wait a certain amount of time. I'm not 100% sure what that time is, but you have to wait a certain amount of time um, and make sure they have anticoagulants because a lot of times what cardioversion can do is it can cause a stroke um, by throwing a clot, um, which is why we need to do, do anticoagulants. Um, and people with atrial fibrillation um, will normally go on anticoagulants because this decreases their risk of having a stroke. Because if you think about it, in atrial fibrillation, the heart is pumping so fast that it's not, it's not really letting all the blood through. So the blood will clot. Um, and this, this can be dangerous um, to many people to get possibly a stroke or any kind of, um, you know, pulmonary embolism, that kind of thing. So we do want to make sure that our atrial fibrillation patients are on anticoagulants. Um, this is ventricle fibrillation. Um, I always say like anytime you like look at a rhythm and you're like, oh, what the hell is that? It's usually ventricle fibrillation, not always. Um, but it's really like you really can't under you really can't tell anything that's going on here, right? Like there's no actual QRS waves. Maybe there's I don't know if this is a P wave, you know. You really can't tell. Um so the first thing that we do is obviously assess our patient um because sometimes what happens is this will show up on the monitor and your patient's actually just fine. Um and it may be artifact. Um but we want to go in and assess our patient, check for pulses obviously. Um, and if there's no pulse, remember, we def um, start CPR immediately. Um, we defibrillate. Um, so ventricle fibrillation is one of the shockable rhythms. Um, so the only two shockable rhythms are VTAC and VFib. All right. Um, we'll go on to asystole, but that is not shockable. Um, a lot of times TV shows shock asystole. However, that is not accurate. So, um, we can shock ventricle fibrillation. Um, and then we use for medications, um, if they're still not, 
if they're still not coming back, like, blood return, um, then we use uh, epi one milligram every three to five minutes. Um, and we also can use amiodarone. And as I said, we could use lidocaine. However, um, we use amiodarone first. Um, and we start off with... Um, Yeah, so we start off with epinephrine and then we go to amiodarone if needed. Um, so that's ventricular fibrillation. Um, as I said, it's a lot like the treatment of pulseless VTAC um, because we do shock, we do give the epi, and we do give the amiodarone for pulseless VTAC. So basically, if you see pulseless VTAC, you're going to treat it the same as ventricle fibrillation and vice versa. So the next one here is um, premature ventricular contractions. Um, I should have put this earlier on the slides, but I don't know why I didn't. <laughs> so um, as I put here, this is a um, an example of one. Um, so there's like a wicked wide QRS complex uh, and it makes no sense, right? So you have all normal, right? And then right here, you have a wide QRS complex. Um, and that's a PVC, we call it. Um, so it's it's supposed to be like greater than um, 0.12 seconds um, because below 0.12 seconds is like the normal for QRS. Um, and there could be two different, um, there could be different rhythms within this rhythm, so to say. So bigeminy is um, when it's every other beat. Meaning, so you would have the PVC here, right? And then you would have no PVC here, but you would have a PVC here. That's not a PVC. I'm just giving you an example. And then trigeminy would be um, third, every third. So you would have, um, I don't know how to erase. Oh, just kidding. Um, but anyway, you would have um, two beats without it, and then you would have another beat with it. Um, so again, there's also two kinds of PVCs. There's um, multifocal and unifocal. Um, and multifocal is worse um, because it means that there's like the different QRS complexes are, some of them are sticking up and some of them are sticking down, if that makes any sense. Um, it's usually due to uh, electrolyte imbalances, so make sure you check the uh, electrolyte levels. It's most commonly um, hypokalemia, so we want to check the potassium and give potassium chloride IV if needed. And remember that we're not going to push the potassium chloride. This is the lethal injection. However, we are going to put it in an IV, um, no more than 20 to 40 milliequivalents an hour depending on um, depending on the type of line and depending on where they are in the hospital. Um, magnesium is also a good one to check and obviously give magnesium if the magnesium is low. So um, that's PVCs. Um, and then the last one to talk about is um, asystole. So asystole is basically um, you don't see anything. Uh, so sometimes there may be like a little bit of a uh, little bit of like a P wave that like you don't see but like it's it looks like it it's not um this is not shockable um this is you start CPR immediately um you have to confirm it with more than one lead um and you immediately do intubation um so you want to get an airway in them as quick as possible now, a lot of times that people that have, um, that are going into asystole already have um, an airway. However, that's not always the case, so we need to make sure that they're intubated and um, go from there. Um, the medication that we use is epinephrine because it's a vasoconstrictor and it lets blood go back. Um, and you use the one milligram every three to five minutes. So that's the biggest thing we use um, for asystole. Um, and asystole kind of is the last, the last draw. Um, so we're going to try CPR. If they, um, 
if they respond, then if they respond and like go into beep bib, then you can shock them. But again, a sisterly is not shockable. I know a lot of TV shows will shock it, but it's not shockable. Um, all right, that wraps up the little video on EKGs. I hope you learned a lot and had fun. Thanks so much.